Bye, guys. Can you unmute yourself and uh, turn your camera on so that we can say hello to each other? Hi. Okay, so I see Amanda, I see Madeline, and Vesha, is that right? Am I pronouncing it correctly? Yes, so that's right. Okay, and George, and Icheng, and Madeline, okay. All right, hopefully we'll expect more people soon. So are you done with your uh, college uh, meeting, the College of Engineering meeting? Yep. How did that go? So I see a thumbs up here. All right, we, we'll start formally uh, in a little bit. Uh, so um, by the way, I'm uh, Somendra Basu. I'm the Associate Division Head for the Material Science and Engineering Program. So when you got the offer letter, uh, it was my signature. And uh, I'll make uh, I'll give a, a brief presentation about the uh, about the program. All right, so um, maybe another minute or so. Uh, did in in the college presentation was you know what the COVID situation was was that covered at all? Yeah, they talked a little bit about trying to be fully in person again in the fall, which is exciting okay. to hear. But okay, yeah. It's a, they did an amazing job though of testing students. So we have our own test facilities and they were testing students twice a week and faculty once a week. Uh, and uh, it was really well done. So they held the numbers down uh, very well, I thought. So that was credit to the university. All right, you know what? I'm going to then uh, go around the room and Everybody introduce yourselves, a little bit about where you're from, what your background is, and maybe is there anything specific that attracted you towards BU or, uh, or, or something that can lead to a discussion later on. So I'm just gonna go in order of your pictures from left to right. I've already introduced myself. I'm Samandra Basu. I'm, um, I'm the associate division head. And uh, if you come to BU, I'll probably be teaching you some of the courses. Um, all right, let's start with Madeline. Hi, um, I'm Madeline. I um, am currently a senior at Syracuse University studying aerospace engineering. Um, and I, I was interested in this just because I wanted to expand my background like beyond aerospace. And I, I thought materials is very interesting. Um, a lot of the, the jobs I'm looking at, I, I'm i very interested in everything like related to materials. So I just figured it would be a very good addition to my aerospace background. Okay, hold that thought. I'm going to address how interdisciplinary material science is, but you already know that. Amanda. Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm a senior at Villanova University. Um, I'm studying chemical engineering with an aerospace engineering minor. So Madeline, I think we have similar interests there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm interested in material science, like specifically how they relate to the aerospace industry, um, how I can kind of combine my chemical engineering background with the aerospace industry. So. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Anvesha. Uh, hello, sir. We are from Mumbai, and uh, I'm doing uh, chemical engineering. I'm currently in my final semester, so um, I have uh, I, I was doing chemical engineering with minor in chemical engineering. But uh, uh, when I learned about uh, the oil and petroleum and everything, I realized it's not going to be like uh, it's a, it's not a dependable source of energy. And there was a course in BU. Uh, from material science with energy and sustainability, uh, green technology and stuff. So I'm pretty much interested in that. So uh, that's why I chose this course. So are, are you coming from us from India by any chance? Because you're, you're very broken up and I think it's uh, it's the connection. So are, are you here in, in the yeah, States yes. or are you? Okay. All right. Yeah, somehow your, uh, 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 your, your connection is uh, this thing. But anyway, welcome. All right, Savannah. So uh, my name my name's actually Stephen. Uh, for some 
somehow I'm on my partner's Zoom account. Oh. Um, <laughs> go figure. Uh, my name is Steven. Who did we admit though? Did we admit him or uh, Savannah or her or you? It, 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 Just it, Steven was admitted. <laughs> that's, that's me. Hi. Okay. Um, my name is Steven Sigward. Um, I'm actually currently an engineer uh, living in Durham, North Carolina. I work for a company called Cree um, that uh, works in semiconductor uh, semiconductors, particularly um, LED lighting. Um, I applied to I, I applied to Boston University for two reasons. I mean, for one, of course, it's a sterling it has a sterling material science program. Um, for, for another, uh, my partner got uh, recently got a residency in the Boston area, so um, just seems like a good I, good time to um, get my master's. So um, looking to kind of expound on my uh, material science education um, and just uh, build on the field that I love so much. Okay. So we had a long time ago, I think his last name was Henderson. Uh, he graduated from BU and he went to Cree, but I don't know if he's there yet or not. But What's his name? Last name is Henderson. I, I, it's been 10, more than 10 years, but uh, I, I, I know he went to Cree. Okay, all right, fair enough. All right, are people moving around here? Uh, maybe not. Uh, George? Hello, hello everyone. Uh, I am George. I'm a Lebanese student. I am currently in my senior year at USAC in chemical engineering. I have a minor degree in petroleum engineering, and I've always been curious to uh, uh, go to BU, to CBU, and uh, well, especially I've been curious in, uh, in uh, specializing in material science. That's obvious. And uh, yeah, I look forward to meeting you all. Okay. And, and you're in space, I can tell. Just like I'm on a beach oh. wearing a sweater, right? Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my sweater gives it away, so I can't say I'm on the beach. Last time I tried it, they caught me right away. But you're wearing a sweater. So that doesn't work. All right. Have I gotten everybody? So. Uh, the other person here is Gabriella, who's one of our staff members, and she's the one who's going to um, really keep us in line, I guess. So you want to say a few words, uh, Gabby? Say hello. Yes. Um, you shouldn't expect much from me in regards to keeping people in line, but I <laughs> do um, communications and marketing for the divisions, and I'm happy to be here. Excited. You guys are here. Okay. All right. Yeah. G Gabby just looks... She's very nice, but she can be tough. So uh, looks can be deceiving. So <laughs> don't get on Gabby's wrong side. All right. Okay. Uh, I think we, Gabby, do you know if there's anybody else who's not made it in here? So there was a You're longer actually, list, but. Yeah, there's a list and probably half of the people haven't made it in here yet. Okay. W when did you guys uh, get done with the previous uh, meeting? with the engineering meeting. How long was it? I think it was like 10 minutes ago or so. It's been a few minutes. minutes. Yeah. So maybe people have gone to get some food or something. Let's see. I still don't see anybody new here. All right. So, so uh, I guess what's going to happen today is I'm going to give a, I don't want to call it formal, but keep it informal. Uh, talk where I'm going to talk about essentially the program itself, a little bit about the student culture, um, uh, a little, very little bit about the research, a bit about, you know, what the programmatic requirements are and what the different degrees are, because there's more than one master's degree. And then uh, many, and and then discuss down the line. You know, if you want to get into a research lab, what needs to happen, uh, as well as um, uh, you know, what what happens to people who want to continue for a PhD. So, uh, just want to get into um, into those scenarios. Um, and then uh, I'll take questions from you. And then we have a panel of three, three master students at different stages and they will talk about, and I'm gonna go away so that, uh, uh, you know, they can talk more freely and, and you can ask them what a mean guy Professor Basu is, et cetera. Those are all fair questions. 
All right. So let me uh, share my screen. Oh, you need to allow me, uh, Gabby, are you driving this? So you need to allow me to share my screen if you are the, because I don't have screen sharing. Uh, so you must be the host because I, I don't, yeah, you are the host, correct. So click on my uh, um, picture on the right, you can, uh, you can allow me screen sharing. Am I okay? All right, okay, I'm the host now, got it. See, I told you Gabby can be tough. She can actually stop my screen. All right. Can you, uh, can you see my, uh, my screen? Okay, is it in yeah. uh, presentation mode? No, it's not in presentation. So there you go, that's in presentation mode. Okay, all right, well, Welcome to the Division of Material Science and Engineering. We are delighted that uh, you are here. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the program and I want to spend even more time answering questions that you might have, and I'm sure you do have questions about the program. All right, so uh, great. So I got to use the pointer here and let me turn the pen on, laser pen, red. All right, so uh, welcome to the virtual visit. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the BU MSc program itself, a little bit about our, us, so who are we? A little bit about what the degree options are, master's degree programs, which is what degree do you choose? Well, when I say I choose, it's what do you degree you, you choose? And finally, what the requirements are, which means how the, how the heck do I get out of here? What do I need to do to get out of here? So I'm gonna address all of those. So MSc at BU, Material Science and Engineering at BU. So the first thing is we are a division, not a department. How many of you understand the difference? Have, do you know the difference between the two? What constitutes a division and what constitutes a department? Any idea? No? A division is where there's only graduate program. So the reason we are not a department is because we don't have an undergraduate material science and engineering program. Now you think that that's a problem. It's not actually, it's, it's perfectly fine simply because a lot of you answered that question. We get students from all over the place, all, sort of, all sorts of backgrounds. You know, already here we see chemical engineers, we see mechanical engineers, aerospace engineers, we have phys physicists, chemists, electrical engineers all over the place. So one of the interesting things about this division is that it places you in a cohort that has very, very different backgrounds and you get to learn science in a very interdisciplinary way. And the way the division is set up is um, every faculty member that belongs to the division also belongs to a department. So, the students of faculty members can belong to many different departments and divisions. So it's a very, very interesting structure where our Dean believes that there are no silos. And if you really go out into the world and try to solve a big problem, you've got to solve it in an interdisciplinary fashion. And you need to be working with people who have got different backgrounds. So material science in general allows that and the division structure really amplifies this, uh, this structure. So we faculty in MSc uh, belong from three different colleges. So College of Engineering, not departments, colleges. So College of Engineering has uh, three departments, biomedical, mechanical, and electrical, although give they, more, they give more than three degrees. The College of Arts and Sciences, which is much bigger than just physics and chemistry, but physics and chemistry is definitely big time part of uh, material science and engineering, as well as the School of Dental Medicine. Now, um, you would think that, you know, oh wait, dental medicine people are materials people? They actually are. A lot of the dental faculty actually have a ceramics engineering background. They went to MSc programs because if you look at all the fillings in your teeth and things like that, your, your tooth is actually ceramic. So there's a lot of uh, materials going on in, in the dental school. So with this structure, we have 62 appointed faculty 
And by appointed faculty are people who have students who are material science students, or they're teaching courses that are material science courses, or they are doing service for the, for the division. And we have 31 affiliated faculty. So we have 93 people, faculty members who are affiliated to materials science. You go to a really big school like, uh, like MIT or Stanford or Berkeley, you're not gonna get these many faculty members. So it's kind of a unique situation where a lot of people doing material science program at the university come together because of this division. And as students, so, so like I said, every faculty will have at least two designate in the division will have at least two designation, uh, the MSc designation and a, uh, a, a department de designation out of listed here. Um, but the students are completely belong to the division. They are all material science thing, but you have access to all these people. And these people are very well funded. So because of large numbers, so there's a lot of active grants, a lot of incoming grants, a lot of research going on. I don't want to get into details of that. The bottom line is if you are, the takeaway is that if you are looking to do a, a master's thesis, it's not guaranteed, but you have a lot of choices. So that's that's the uh, that's the message I want, want to give you. Uh, you may not go get exactly what you want to do, but um, there is probably more than one person who's in a similar area, whose background sort of matches yours, and uh, it'll be your job to convince that person to uh, uh, that you want to get into the lab and work on that uh, with them. And I'll talk a little bit more about how to go about finding master's thesis and then transitioning into the PhD program for those of you who want to do that. All right. <clears throat> so uh, MSc faculty are also pretty, uh, have, have done well for themselves. There are nine uh, National Academy members, uh, about 70 total fellows of their whatever respective societies are. And they come from all sorts of societies starting from you know mechanical or electrical or or materials themselves, like you know, materials research society, or, or things like that. Um, among the young faculty, also very good. There are about fifty early career awards, which is hard to get. Uh, average age index is thirty-five, and average citations is nine thousand. So that's a pretty good uh, set of faculty. Of course, not evenly distributed, but if you look across the spectrum, that's those, those are pretty good numbers. All right. So in terms of research areas, and I'm going to go through very briefly research areas and then transition on to uh, you know, things that are probably initially more important to you, but then if you want to do research, then these things will come into, uh, uh, into play. So there are four, the way we define our research, we divide them into four areas, biomaterials, electronic and photonic materials, materials for energy and environment, and nanomaterials. Of course, again, please don't think that these are silos, absolutely not. For example, nanomaterials can show up in in all of the above. So um, the only reason we have uh, classified it this way is because we have courses that belong into bins, certain bins because of the course structure. But if you quickly uh, look at, for example, biomaterials, we have some very, very applied uh, kind of research as well as very fundamental uh, kind of research. So um, I've shown a couple of, uh, uh, you know, for example, Professor Zaman is, has built a tool that allows, if you go to third world countries, there's a lot of fake drugs going around and it doesn't help anybody, especially the patient. So it's this is like a briefcase size test lab that you can carry anywhere and you can crush any lab anywhere in the world without just, you just need an electrical connection to the thing and you can tell whether it's fake or not or, or what percentage of that, does it really have the ingredients that it's supposed to have, et cetera. So, and, and I don't want to get into each one of those. So those are the kinds of things that are going on in biomaterials. Electronic and photonic materials, there's a lot of uh, looking at the, at the brains, trying to, uh, you know, looking at brain function, trying to pinpoint uh, different body parts that might be malfunctioning. Uh, Professor Ramachandran works on uh, optical fibers, uh, trying to see how the light actually travels optical fibers. So it's basically uh, light matter interactions. And then there is um, building microscopes to quickly image neural activity. So those are all kinds of uh, uh, things that are going on. And it's interesting, like Professor Sanders is in the electrical engineering department, but doing a very bio heavy. Uh, so this is very, very common across the, across the, uh, the college. 
uh, in in uh, energy, for example, uh, there's a lot of work going on in trying to uh, uh, make very energy intensive uh, materials processing green. So reduce the not only the energy needed, but also um, what the byproducts are. Make them make sure that they are not environmentally unfriendly. We're going on in lithium batteries. We're going on in uh, photovoltaic systems, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not going to go through e each one of them. And then in nanomaterials, there's a lot of metamaterial kind of uh, kind of work um, applied to a various application, including uh, acoustic, uh, you know, ultrasound kind of uh, uh, kind of applications. Um, soft materials are, are uh, especially for um, surgery. Uh, uh, there's a lot of research going on in there, as well as building hierarchical structures, both top down and bottom up, uh, trying to mimic nature. So, you know, some, these are so some of the kind of research that's that's going on in the day. So that's the first part is the research. The second is, um, is that uh, being a division and not having an undergraduate cohort, uh, is there a community? And the answer is because it's relatively small compared to a big department, even though there's a lot of faculty who are involved in there, um, there is a very strong student community here. So I'll just go through some of the uh, some of the student organizations that are there. So Sage, which is a Society of Graduate Engineers, and the Women's uh, uh, Graduate Engineers, which is Graduate Women in Science and Engineering, GYS. These are two of the organizations. And then there are two that are specific to material science and engineering. So it's the BU chapter of the Materials Research Society and the BU chapter of ASM International. So these are two societies that are exclusively for materials people. It's not like if, if others want to join, uh, they can, but these are populated by, uh, by the materials folks, both masters and PhDs. All right, so quickly, a BU MRS chapter. BU is a great place for the MRS because uh, Materials Research Society has two meetings. One of them is um, uh, is in uh, always in Boston. So uh, if students give talks at those meetings, then the department uh, actually helps out in terms of sending the student uh, to these meetings. And the MRS chapter actually does a lot in terms of getting people together, a lot of team building, professional development, uh, a lot of food, games, socials, et cetera, et cetera. And then the ASM chapter, so, so the MRS chapter is sort of, the MRS, the focus is on, on the science. Uh, so, uh, so the connections you make are, are, if you go into research, you would meet the kind of people that you would interact with. And the ASM is more professional uh, where people, they'll bring in CEOs of, of local companies. And if you want to network and find a job, a, 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 a research kind of job, that would be the right, right place to go. And they, they actually have a lot of local events. We are supported by the ASM International uh, and um, you know, they have uh, a lot of activities for high school, underprivileged high school kids, uh, where we encourage them to uh, come uh, to come to STEM sort of uh, uh, programs when they start going to college. All right, and this is kind of unique to the material science of engineering. The senior students, especially after the COVID thing, where they realize that people are not getting out a lot, they're not having a lot of social contact. So there's a peer mentoring uh, group that the senior students will actually pair up and advise the students coming in how to navigate the system. And if there are issues, they'll really act as they'll tell you where to go and, and how to deal with things. So uh, something that actually faculty are not as good as the student, your peer students are. So there's a, essentially the thing I'm giving you the message is it's, it's a very uh, close knit community uh, with a lot of support for the students coming in. All right, so if you choose this program, you're going to get an academic advisor. So who's going to help you navigate the program? And every semester, you are going to meet with your academic advisor, discuss the courses that you're gonna take, who will go over your sort of where you are in the program, what do you need to do, 
and uh, so that you graduate on time. If you go on to do research, then your research advisor is going to become your academic advisor. And basically, if there's any academic issues, the academic advisor is the first point of contact, and then you go to the programs manager, and then me, and the, um, this is where the buck stops. So I'll, I'll, I'm the final say in terms of what, uh, if there's any academic issues. And any other issues, the staff, uh, Elizabeth Flagg, who I'm sure has contacted you for several things, she's wonderful great person to talk to. And then Ruth Mason is the director of, of the division. All right, so, so that's about who we are and who, what would you see coming in as a student? Now let's talk about the academic side of it. What degree would you, would you choose? There are three degrees, MInch, master's without thesis and master's with thesis. What is the difference? So you want to do an MInch if your career profile is a technology manager in industry. So the coursework is slightly different and I'll go through the individual coursework a little bit later, but the, one of the major differences is that you are required to do one technology management course. And you can take up to three technology management courses. So basically you can take five engineering courses and three uh, sort of engineering technology kind of, uh, kind, kind of courses. If you are doing uh, without a thesis, your career is somebody who will go into industry and will actually be a practicing engineer. And there is no room for a technology management course here. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm sorry. There is no requirement for a technology management course, but you can take one. You have room for one course without having to take extra courses. If you're doing a thesis, then your career profile is a researcher in either industry or you want to go, go into the PhD program. So that's your, that's your track. And you have no room for a technology management course unless you take it as an extra course, okay? So, uh, and I'll go through specific courses requirements in a minute. And then all three degrees have uh, what's called a practicum requirement, which needs you to be, to do something uh, in a lab or um, in, in a setting outside the classroom. All right, so how do I graduate? So let's start with the MS requirement. Uh, both, you know, all the master's uh, uh, requirements are 32 credits and each course is four credits. So we are talking about eight courses. So everybody needs to do eight courses to get out. If you are doing without a thesis, you have to do for a MS requirement, you got to do four core courses and two concentration courses. And I'll define what those are in a minute. So that makes six and then you have two other elective courses, one of which must satisfy the practicum requirement. So uh, when I say a practicum course, there are in the list of practicum courses, there are, there are few, one of them must be that practicum course. If you are doing MS with, uh, uh, MS, uh, with a thesis, then uh, you need to do four core courses, two concentration courses, and then the remaining, typically the remaining two are your thesis courses. Um, we say that you can do, you know, one, one semester of research, but that's never really never been done. And realistically, you're gonna be doing at least two semesters, if not more. So minimum, typically eight is, is what, uh, what students doing a thesis will do. So that'll sort of essentially two course equivalents of thesis or more, and then that satisfies your eight, eight courses. And the fact that you're doing thesis satisfies your practicum requirement. All right, uh, and, and these are, I, I, I think these are probably not as important if you come here, then those are this probably more appropriate for orientation rather than uh, open house. All right. So what kind of core courses are there? The first core course is in basically a solid state physics course. And uh, this is a solid state physics course taught by engineering. And this is a solid state course physics taught by, by the physics department. So this is an advantage of having uh, such an interdisciplinary program that we actually have two choices of, of, of courses taught with two different slants. So this, for example, the, the course content is not different, but for example, the electrical, optical, magnetic properties will emphasize examples more, while the, so the physics course will emphasize derivations and fundamentals more. So it depends on what you want to, you know, 
what your research entails, but they're close enough that you can only take one for credit. Everybody does a thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. Everybody does a kinetic materials, uh, kinetic processing materials. So those three sort of, you know, the, the solid state physics, thermostatistical mechanics, kinetics, everybody does. And then in the fourth core course, you have a choice. And for example, if you're in biomaterials, it makes a lot of sense to do polymers and soft materials. So depending on what your sort of interest is, you, you take the appropriate courses. These are typically taught once a year, and these are taught once every two years or two, either every year or once every two years. So you may have to wait a little bit to see uh, if you have a specific interest, you may have to wait a, a semester or two to, uh, to take that, okay? All right. <laughs> And then about the concentration courses, uh, there's a list of courses under biomaterials, list of courses under uh, energy and environment, electronic, photonic, and nanomaterials. And MS students need to take two courses from any one concentration area. So that's sort of the breadth in, in their area that, that they're, uh, or the depth inside their area that they have to, that they have to cover. All right, thesis. When you come in, or if you choose to come here, as you, when you matriculate into the program, your default is MS without a thesis. You cannot come in with a thesis option. You gotta find a thesis advisor. So not everybody is guaranteed a thesis project, but if you try hard enough, it's, it's not that difficult. It's, I can't guarantee it, but it's not that difficult. So just to give you an example, if 30 people come in, maybe about, 12 to 15 of them might do thesis. That's, that's the sort of number that, that we see. And of the 12 to 15 who do a thesis, maybe two to three are going to, maybe a couple will go to PhD programs at BU, and maybe a couple more will go to PhD programs elsewhere. So maybe a third of those will end up in a, in a PhD program. All right, so typically, um, uh, you can, you know, you, you, it is very typical for students to start looking for a project in the first semester. And typically they end up finding a project at the end of the, you know, before the end of the second semester. And the reason is if you come in and you say, I'm a MSc master student and I want to do research, the first thing they're gonna ask is, you know, how are you doing in your courses? And you don't have anything to show them yet, quite yet. On the other hand, if you do really well, people are gonna talk and say, hey, have you seen this student? You know, it's amazing. Uh, it's in the person is in the class with PhD students and is outperforming them. You know, maybe we're going to, we should ask the student to apply for a PhD, something like that. So essentially it'll probably take you a semester or two of classwork at BU to get known around. And then if you are doing well uh, and your interest matches that of faculty, um, it usually works out and, 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 and you start on a thesis. Um, when you start on a thesis, you do not get paid. You do not get an RA as, as a master's student, but if you do well uh, by invitations, often the faculty will say apply for a PhD. And once you become a PhD student, you don't need to finish your master's thesis. Um, you basically transfer it to your PhD. And uh, when you do a PhD, you're gonna pick up a master's on the way. So you do get a master's eventually, but you don't get it right away. You just go into the PhD program and then you get a stipend and everything. You get a RA essentially, okay? All right. Uh, and then, uh, so that's about the thesis and then elective courses are, are, you know, there's a list of elective courses that are specific to the program or any concentration or core course that you did not use towards, uh, uh, towards your uh, core or concentration requirement. Uh, or essentially they are pretty easy about because people have, for example, right now, a lot of people want to do, for example, deep learning or a course in, a course in deep learning. So that's not really materials, but if, you know, if they have a good reason for it, they'll petition for it and we are fairly uh, good about it as long as there's room in, in the class. So there are some popular courses that, that students want to take and put on their CV, as long as there is room in the class and their engineering science and engineering management courses, we are pretty easy on it, we, we allow that. Uh, on the other hand, if you want to take ballroom dancing, you can, but you take it on your own dime and you're not gonna get credit for it towards, uh, uh, towards a, a degree. 
All right, now let's go to mEng. So mEng has slightly different uh, focus as well as different requirements. It still takes uh, eight courses or 32 credits. There's only two course requirements, one in solid state physics and the other one in thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. So you don't have to do kinetics and you don't have to do uh, the choice of uh, four courses. And you have to take two structured materials courses. So basically you have to do four of these courses and then among the electives, you have to do your practicum, which is also a material science course. Essentially you got to do three material science related courses. And then, so that leaves three electives and you can choose those three electives to be three engineering management courses. So that's where the number three comes in. So people who really want to go into technology management can avail of that. Uh, and, and, but remember this is engineering management. So it's courses like innovation or, uh, you know, IP engineer, you know, IP, how to go about that, that kind of uh, management. All right, and typically you can finish it. Uh, you can finish both a uh, master's with, uh, without a thesis or an MEng in two semesters. People normally don't do it. Uh, they typically finish in three semesters. If you're doing a, 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 a thesis, you're typically talking at least four semesters, if not four semesters in the summer after, after the two years you're here. All right, so MEng courses are, as I said, are either one of the two solid, you know, solid state physics courses or thermodynamics. And if somebody has taken one of these at a graduate level in their previous um, institution and can show that they have taken, for example, uh, appropriate uh, solid state physics, then we'll allow them to take one of the other core courses to satisfy, you know, uh, towards their degree uh, by petition. All right. Uh, unlike uh, for the concentration where the two courses for an MS degree have, has to be from the same concentration, for the structured courses for MEng, they can be from any concentration. So you can mix and match. You can take a bio materials course and you can take a electric, electronic and photonics materials course. So uh, again, those are the areas. All right. So uh, everybody in MEng has to do a uh, engineering management course and uh, they have to do a practicum so they can do up to two more courses, two of, both of which can be engineering management if necessary. So practicum, what are the practicum uh, courses that satisfy the practicum? The thesis does and the non-thesis options are, this is called the introduction to material science and engineering in non-COVID days, which I hope if you come here, you're going to go get into, this will require you to start talking to faculty. When you're taking this course, the material is for people who don't have a material science and engineering undergraduate. So it introduces you at a accelerated sort of uh, maybe senior level, but much more condensed uh, topics from, from many, many different areas of material science and engineering into one class but it also requires you to find a lab and spend at least 50 hours in the lab. So that's a great way for you to get to know a faculty whose research you're interested in. And if you do well, that's the right person to say, hey, can I join your lab uh, as a master's student? So that it's sort of a nice entry point into this. The second one is advanced materials characterization. So this is typically taught in the fall and this is taught in the spring and you can take either one or both. You can use one of them as your, uh, as your uh, elective if you want. And this is talks about different materials characterization tools. How, you know, how does X-ray work or electron, you know, SEM work or TEM work or uh, XPS work, et cetera, et cetera. The theory behind it, as well as the instrumentation there's typically, uh, you know, if you have the instrumentation, you'll have a tour of, of the instrumentation. You look at some data taken from that instrumentation and work uh, interpreting that data. All right, or you can do independent study or you can do a mentored project. All right, and then you, get, you can get more of these details uh, on the web and I, I am sure you have looked into it. So there are several resources uh, for you on the web that you can find on the MSC website. So that's all I have. I don't want, I'm gonna stop sharing here and I'm sure you have questions. So uh, I will take your questions before I turn it over to the student panel who should be able to answer your questions in a more informal fashion. 
Okay. Uh, Seth, you, uh, you, you did not, you came in late, right? You have not introduced yourself, right? You want to introduce yourself, Seth? Just un unmute yourself, please. Yes. Yeah. Hi. I'm sorry. I, uh, I ended up, I followed a wrong link and ended up. In Hi, Seth. Are you there? I guess this. Yeah. Can you introduce yourself? Just say a few words about yourself and where, you know, what your background is and what drew you yeah. to be you. Uh, my name is Seth Wag Swift. I have a, a degree in chemistry, but I've been working as a, a diesel mechanic for the past couple of years. Um, I'm really, I, I'm, I want to work in uh, renewable energy. I want to discover the next battery electrode or uh, type of solar cell. So yeah, excited to be okay. here. Okay. Yeah, as Justin would say, stand in line. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, did I miss anybody? Uh, uh, who's DMJ? Uh, here. Hi. Uh, yeah, introduce yourself. Um, yeah, um, my my Chinese name Chinese name is uh, Dai Mingji, and my okay. and translated in English is you can call me Mingji Dai. Okay. And my go yeah, and my goal is to uh, definitely go to PhD students. So. Uh, okay. Nice to meet you all. That's all. Okay, and you're you're coming to us from China. Yeah, that's right. What time is it now? Uh, it's two o'clock in the morning. So still early, early evening for you, right? Yeah, no, yeah, that's I'm right. Just kidding. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, Grad students okay. never sleep anyway. So. <laughs> uh, okay. Yicheng, did you? You have not introduced yourself either, right? You want to uh, yeah, unmute yeah, yourself yeah. and say hello? Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes. Hi, my, my name is Yi Chen, and I'm currently a senior major in chemical engineering. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I want to... Where, where are you? Here. Are you in China? Are you in the U.S.? Where are you? Yeah, I'm currently in Chicago right now. I, I was actually on the quiet train. Oh, Chicago. That's why I couldn't. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, my school is in uh, Illinois, Illinois Champaign-Urbana. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's it. It's a nice really good you. school, but I think our uh, our city is a little bit better than. Yeah, for sure. That you might be. <laughs> there, there. That's what one of the reasons I applied to school in Boston. Such a hard city. <laughs> yeah, it's that's really funny. not much. Your school is very here. good though. <laughs> Very yeah. good program, but yeah. Thank you. Funding is Thank kind you. Of, <laughs> yeah. Nice to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you. Okay. All right. So open for questions. So let's, uh, I want to spend about, uh, you know, five, 10 minutes answering questions and then I'll uh, let the student panel take over and I'll take your leave. Any questions about the pro program, about anything about research? I sort of skipped through very quickly about things. Um, if you have any specific questions about any areas or um, or anything that I said. Um, I just have a quick question. So can you kind of elaborate on yep. the Mantor um, project? I believe the number was 952, the class. You mean the... Uh, yeah, uh, what, what, what do students normally do? In yeah, the are Mantor you talking project? about the... Um, uh, about the uh, about the instrumentation sort of the the, the different techniques for characterization that no was? i forget the number but it was something that's related to the to the project oh oh oh, oh okay 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 no no I, okay I, I, so generally uh so let me let me go back here and i'm kind of frozen like what kind of project do students usually work on so, so, uh, so here, so, okay, the number is not important. So how, when do pe people take that project, right? That's, that's what you're asking the, the question. So for example, yeah. you go to, you go to a faculty and you say, I'm really interested in, uh, in your research. I want to do a thesis. And the faculty says, well, uh, you know, I don't know you from Adam. Um, why don't you do a rotation in my class? in my lab and let's you know stay for a semester and let's fix a project 
So then the student would sign up for that class with that faculty member. And then maybe in three months, that project is going really well. Uh, and the faculty says, okay, I'm going to take you on as a master's students with thesis, then that project will just be converted into a thesis. Uh, we'll just convert it into a thesis credit. Okay, does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah, thank you. So that's that's how the, the, the project works. So, uh, you know, a lot of students don't want to do a thesis. They just want to do a project. Then, then they can just do that. But more often than not, it's a student who's seeking to do a three thesis initially starts off as a project because the faculty just says, I need to see how you do. Okay. All right, again, I do not want to give the impression that everybody who wants to do a thesis can do it because there is a chance that you will not find a faculty either because your grades are not good enough or your background is not the right fit or you started in a lab and it didn't go very well and you and he basically said, okay, finish with a, uh, with a project. So it's not guaranteed, but if you're good, faculty will look for you and offer you projects or, or, or offer you thesis, okay? So among the students, there is a student, one student who uh, is going on to a PhD and you can ask that student about what the process was and how easy or how hard it was to find a project to work on, okay? And, and there are students who, who are going to do a, a project without wanting to do a thesis because they may want different experiences because they know where they want to go. And again, I think you're gonna hear Justin who knows exactly where, what he wants to do later. And he's sort of picking his projects so that they sort of fill up his CV appropriately. And uh, we did offer him, if you want to do something more formally, he says, no, I, I want to go this way. So we are pretty flexible. So does that answer your question? All right, anything else? Um, kind of expanding on that, um, reading through BU's website, um, I believe one of the options is a uh, mentored internship in industry. Is that, uh, is that a possibility either through the independent study or the mentored project? Where does that fit into the, M to the MN curriculum? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, internship in industry is possible. Realistically, uh, there's very few master students who avail of that simply because uh, by the time you're taking your initial courses, you're probably not as attractive to the industry as you are a little bit later. So it's probably more common in PhD students who take a semester off and basically they're looking to go to some industry and they would, uh, you know, they would take a semester off, work in that industry, use that part in their thesis, and then get a job in that industry. But yes, it is possible to 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 do uh, uh, an internship in there, but uh, that's something that um, probably is much, much more common for uh, electrical engineers, people who are doing programming, simply because industry is looking for people who are doing programming and it's great that, you know, it doesn't cost a lot of money. So you have these students, they can spend the summer or even a semester and they are paid, they're not paid as much as an employee could and they do that. So it's, it's not as common uh, for MSc students as it is for the computer engineering students. So. Okay. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. No, it, it does. Um, what, um, so that that's something, I mean, that aspect of the MNG curriculum is very attractive to me. What kind of resources are offered to kind of get students into that if they're really gung-ho about it, which I would be. Yeah, so uh, for you, I would say definitely join ASM and network heavily because AS, the, the role of the ASM is to get uh, sort of CEO type or CTO type of people in front of you guys. So it really is the organization that tries to put you in front of industry leaders, industry technology leaders. And uh, 
absolutely. I mean, a lot of people actually have gotten jobs because they came in, they, they formed sort of a, uh, a network, uh, you know, they formed a bond and then they visited their facilities and, and sometimes faculty will have uh, uh, industrial projects and then that's another thing that sometimes some of the master students may work on these industrial projects and then they'll make they'll make contacts okay so those are all possible yeah those are all possibilities so uh, so student so why should a faculty take on a master student uh, because it's a short term project and uh, so either it's a, it's a subset of something that a phd student is doing but there is so much to do that there is a nice subset that a master student can do that can help the phd student or it's a short term project that doesn't make sense to put a phd student you put a master student and you do that and those tend to be more industry sort of kind of projects so it sort of works out by itself sure okay What else, guys? All right. So if there's no other questions. Uh, yeah, I've got one more. Yeah. Yeah, um, go ahead, please. So in lieu of the in lieu of the mentored project that we've kind of talked about, what are some examples of independent studies that would satisfy one of the um, degree requirements? So uh, the independent study would be something like, uh, so, so the mentored project really is where you're given a specific task, you do that and you write a report at the end of that and you're graded on the report. An independent study could be something like, I'm really interested in this area. So the faculty member will give you a paper in that area a week and say that one hour a week, you read it up and we'll discuss it. So it gives you a good literature background about, so if you're trying to get into the industry and you're a faculty member who's an expert in that area, you can you can get a, a sort of a good review of what the state of the art is. So, you know, you end up reading 15 papers over the semester or, 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 or between 10 to 15 papers and discussing it with a faculty member. So it's not as much a written report of something that you have done, but you it's an independent study of, of the literature kind of thing. So depending on you know what flavor it is, you, you get the right, uh, you sign up for the right course. Okay. Very good. Yeah. What else guys, that's it? Very quickly. Um, I know- yeah, that please that BU has a, a, an Engineers Without Borders chapter. Mm -hmm. how, how realistic in the, in the sort of condensed format of, a, of an MS is it to participate in that? Uh, it is not hard during the summer. Okay. But probably not, especially if they are going away. It's probably not a good idea to do it during the semester. It's a, it's a rigorous program, no doubt about it. You don't want to fall behind. But in the summer, absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. you can do that. Yeah. And especially if you are interested, for example, you said you're interested in clean energy, right? So if you're doing a project that's in clean energy, you're, you're going somewhere and building, uh, you know, clean water or something like that, that's very relevant to your experience. That's going to just add to your CV, right? So, yeah. So that's encouraged. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right, so the remaining people who haven't introduced themselves are, uh, are uh, students. Have I missed any out, out, uh, uh, potential students? I don't think so. I think the remaining people are current PU students. So I'm going to leave and I'm going to let them introduce themselves in turn. And the only thing I'm going to say is, um, Justin, you, you want to start? And then you hand it over to Mathan and then to Hazel. Okay. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, hold on. Before, hold on. Uh, Gabriella, please make sure that I'm no longer the host because I don't want to log out and, and kick everybody out. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm also the host. So I'll. I'll okay. For your all right. Meeting. It was great meeting all of you guys. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. No, I don't want to end the meeting for all. Leave meeting. Assign and leave. Gabriella. Assign and leave.
So I'll get to it. Yeah. Um, for us, the boss is a, a, a trip. But uh, hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Justin Turley. Um, I'm a second year master student. And the reason I'm second year is because I'm actually a LEAP student. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of the program, but it's a pretty unique program within BU. Um, and uh, so I'm graduating. Uh, it, in like two months, which is which is crazy. Um, my research topic right now, I'm actually helping out Professor Basu on doing uh, identify identification of nanomaterials for uh, anodes on fuel cells. So that's kind of what I'm, but it's just like a side project. I'm not getting any credit for it. I'm not getting paid for it. I wish I was, but uh, you know, you can't get everything you want. So it's just like something I'm interested in. I'm trying to get into batteries. Uh, so uh, fuel cells are, are pretty relevant. And so how did you arrive at BU? I arrived at BU again through the LEAP program. What that means is I had an accounting undergrad and I, uh, there's a unique opportunity at BU to get an, uh, a materials science uh, degree with a non-engineering background, a master's degree. So it's a unique opportunity. That's how I got here, but that's probably not applicable to you guys. Uh, I've been in Boston for two years. Before that, I grew up in Hong Kong and um, I'm involved I mean, activities on campus, it's, it's been kind of tough be, be, between like COVID and everything. Uh, but I, I try to uh, keep in contact with other people from my program, uh, my other fellow LEAP students, and I'm part of the Clean Tech Club on campus. Uh, so that's been fun. But yeah, uh, that's why I am interested in batteries. Um, looking forward to speaking with you guys and letting you, informing you about BU. Yeah, I can jump in and introduce myself. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Hazel Chen. I flew to Boston last year in uh, January. Uh, before that, I waited for my visa for like nine months. Uh, I stay in Boston for like around eight months. And uh, all the other time, I spent my summer vacation and uh, winter break in Los Angeles. Um, I joined GY's M uh, MSA program uh, this semester, which is really great. And I work for Professor Shiling right now, uh, which is about two dimensional material and uh, like medicines and its application. And I grew up in China. Uh, yeah, that's all. Hi, everyone. I'm, uh, I'm Madan. I'm a second year master's student. I'm a uh, currently working on my thesis and I'll be uh, joining the PhD program this fall. So if you had any questions regarding the thesis, I can, I can help you guys out. So Gabriella, do I just go into my section? Yep. All right, cool. Yeah. So let me know if you want me to leave, if anybody feels like they can't ask something because I'm here, you know, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm sure we won't have that problem. Okay, uh, so I'm I'm here to talk about academics. Um, I, I'm a relatively good student, so yeah, uh, let's have at it. So the first thing is studying and resources. Um, so of course, the biggest resources are always your fellow classmates and your professors. They're the first people you can go to. I mean, with every class that I'm in, the first thing I try to do is like shake hands, talk to people and set up like a study group, right? Start texting people um, and do like a weekly thing. I mean, obviously that's not always everyone's cup of tea, but I mean, if you don't wanna do that, there's always the professor to reach out to. I have to say that not every professor is readily accessible, but I mean, if you really make an effort, um, then I mean, they, they have, they meet with you. So, but, and then some professors are great. I had a professor who did like literally five hours of office hours every week. And I took advantage of all five hours every week. And, and that was like, I would not have passed the class without that. So I guess the point for that, and this is kind of going to be the overarching point of my talk today is that you get out of school what you put in and you could coast through this whole program and not talk with anyone and not try to do research and just get your good grades and then leave but or you can you know try and reach out to uh, professors, try and set up relationships, try to reach out to different societies around campus, be really involved with that and you're going to get a lot back out of campus. It's going to be a lot more work, but you're you're going to get out what you put in. So you have all different types of options. And and 
uh, just to be clear, like for the mentorship program or like working on the side, I know the boss who was talking about that, like no one's going to do that for you. You need to set the initiative, set it up and then present it to them so that all they need to do is kind of sign off, right? Like you need to have an initiative to do that. And it's not just going to be like, oh, here's, uh, here's a job for you to work on the side. You need to set up the job and then present it to them. So just want to preface with that. Um, of course, if, if you don't, if you're still struggling because you don't have, uh, even though you're talking to other students or talking to the professors, there's a great like safety net that is the graduate engineering uh, office. I mean, they are so friendly, so outgoing. And if there's like a Slack group, um, I, there's a website, they, they're readily responded to emails. So, and there's all types of stuff between like meditation programs, between mentorship programs, between um, I think uh, study sessions, all that. If, if the safety net of the MSE program, the graduate studies program is, is there. So it's kind of your fallback. Um, now, the next topic I'm supposed to talk about is classes versus research. Um, so classes, grad classes are a little bit different from undergraduate classes because you're in this kind of space where it's it hasn't been taught for very long. I mean, these are complex topics that not like probably a, a couple hundred people in the world know about. So you're there's not this well set up system of learning. It, the, it's basically some guy talking about what he's an expert in and you have to really drive the learning yourself it's not like undergraduate where you're going to have like a homework packet every week or or you know like a project or something like that what it's going to be most at least for for the classes i've taken is like three exams and then maybe a project and that's it and and everything else is self-driven right so that's again that goes back to the theme of you get out what you put in right if you put in the time and you need to put in time outside of class, otherwise you're not gonna pass. Um, now, how important are, are, are classes and grades in graduate school? So this is like something that's dear to my heart. Um, I just got my first job offer today, so I'm, I'm super duper excited and I'm interviewing later today. But so your grades, the grades get you in the door, right? They're, the, fir the game you play is that HR is there to, to say, no, we're not gonna take you. So it's a numbers game, right? They're, they're trying to sift through maybe 10,000 resumes and they're saying, hey, this guy doesn't have the right GPA. So this guy doesn't have whatever. And there's, they're there to cut off. But once you get past that barrier of HR and, and grades is how kind of how you do that, then it's what you do outside of your classes that really matter when you're applying to jobs. So for example, um, uh, Professor Basu, the work I've been doing for him with the analyzing nanomaterials, I've talked about that for every job interview I've done and that's been invaluable. And it's just, it just shows something that, that not every other candidate has, right? There's gonna be thousands of candidates with good grades. There's not gonna be many candidates who have used machine learning to analyze nanoparticles. So, the grades get you in the door, but it's really what you do outside of your classes that, that really make you shine as a candidate, okay? Um, and yeah, how much time do you, should I devote to class compared to rotations or research or finding a thesis advisor? I mean, I, that's all up to you. Again, if you think your grades are gonna get you through, then, then go for it. But if you really wanna get something out of, campus or have an exceptional resume, you have to put in the time and you're going to get that time rewarded too by, by the effort you put in. Yeah. And that's the end. Anyone, any questions? Hey, I don't bite. I mean, any, anything? Uh, I guess I have one. So sure. you said you're, you're working with Professor Basu uh, and I, I couldn't quite tell if it was just a joke, like not getting credit, not getting paid. Is it a thesis or is it, it's just sort of your own project on the side? It's just my own project on the side. Um, awesome. Yeah, um, and I'm, I'm carving out probably like 10, 15 hours a week to do that. Um, so uh, to be frank, um, I, the, the university, uh, you know, COVID has hit hard. So there's not a lot of funding currently going around for non PhDs or non people who aren't doing theses. So unless you're really, really good, like you, that might not be available, but I think the situation is going to change in a year or two as like funding opens up. So, I mean, I, of course I asked for pay, I asked for stuff, but it's just right now it's, it's just not 
a good situation. Now, if I go back and did it again, I would have done it for credit. I think that would have saved me like 15 hours a week that I didn't have to take this other class, but hey, uh, what are you gonna do? Kind of going off of that question, is this a project that you came up with or like you just knew you wanted to do a project or how did you come up with it? Okay, so um, I think this is gonna be relevant to Seth. I basically, how I went about it is I took a look at all the labs across campus. By the way, Gabriella, like there needs to be a better resource, like a, like a central database of all the labs. It's so hard to find information on them. Oh. Uh, yeah, but anyways, so I, I looked through all the labs on campus. I figured out which ones would be applicable to what I wanted to do, which is batteries. Um, I found one on fuel cells, which is close enough. So then I started emailing all the professors saying, hey, this is what I want to do. Uh, Professor Basu was nice enough to set me up with one of his PhD students. And we talked about what she did. And I shadowed her around for two, three weeks up to a month. And then she was like, hey, what were you interested in? This is what I need help in. And then we came to something together. But I think that's a very unusual. Most students are going to be doing it more as credit or more as um, research, like an actual research paid. And so then that would be more defined from the top down uh, rather than me, which I did from the bottom up. So I think that's kind of a unique position. Um, though I have to say, I, after applying to this fuel cell thing, I did find two other battery labs on campus that I kind of wish I'd apply to, but hey, that, it is what it is. Oh, and uh, one other big thing, and I'm not sure if this is just COVID, but a lot of the projects that are available right now are very computational. So that means that you're not going to be doing work in the campus. I'm, again, I'm not sure if that's a COVID situation, but just be aware that there's kind of two sides. You can be doing completely computational stuff, or you could be doing um, like stuff in the actual hands-on stuff in the lab, but uh, they need a lot of computational work. Great. Well, thank you everyone for your time. Hi everyone. So I guess I'll just talk a little bit about the thesis track. So the first question is, uh, how soon do I need to have a thesis project figured out? So I would recommend that by the, after the, after the first semester is over, you have the break in the winter, you take some time, start thinking about some areas which you're interested in. You don't have to look for labs immediately, start looking for areas you're interested in. And then by the mid of middle, like spring break or just after spring break, I would recommend you start sending out emails, see if there are open positions. Uh, even if there are any open positions, if you find a very good lab, you can work in the lab during the summer and provided we can prove ourselves that can turn into a thesis and you can continue that on and graduate in the coming fall or the next spring, depending upon your level to which you, you would want to uh, do the project. And okay, the next question is like, what is the typical, typical dynamic for working with your academic advisor? So I can just tell uh, my experience with my advisor. So we mostly meet uh, every other week. Sometimes we meet during, you know, like every week, if, uh, you know, something exciting happened, good or bad exciting. But other than that, it's just, uh, we meet every other week, but it, it could be different for other, other advisors because I've heard from people that uh, the experience varies. Okay. Okay. The next one is uh, getting involved. So for, for me personally, it was very different because uh, I took a I took a course with my uh, current uh, PI, Professor Payala, and uh, and the project which I'm doing is also kind of based off of that. So I just uh, sent him an email saying that I've been in your class. I uh, I sent him the grade sheet, and I uh, told that I would like to work in a particular project. That turns out that that project is completed, but he, there was still an uh, other opportunity, like a professor boss who said, like, I'm doing a part of a, 
part a little part of a phd students uh, bigger project currently so uh, that's what i'm uh, working on right now and uh, and since that's just my personal experience i heard from others that uh, if you're really interested in a project you can send an email send another one even if you didn't take their class something like that and i've also heard this from one person but i don't know if you can do it uh, If you're really interested, you can show up at their door, like literally. But I'm not sure if uh, how that would work. But I guess that depends upon your interest to that particular project. I, I'm not advising against or for it. I'm just putting out what all I've heard. And uh, so that's all I have. So does anybody have any questions? Uh, could you just speak a little bit? Like, I'm just curious exactly what your project is. Like, what is your, what does a day in the lab look like? Okay, so, so my project is, uh, or my, or my, the PhD student's project is he's developing a device to increase the output of a uh, terahertz radiation. So terahertz radiation is basically the the sweet spot between a microwave and infrared. So uh, he's a, uh, and he, he, they have like a new kind of device architecture. and they had like a little you know like kind of like a project in the fabrication part and i just went in there i'm and i'm helping them in the lab and uh, and also indirectly i also learned about how the device operates and uh, so that's kind of cool yeah so i mostly work just in the clean room uh, i go to the lab two or three times a week the other days i'm sitting reading and uh, learning how to do the procedures that's kind of kind of how like a basic week looks for me cool thanks um i was wondering if you went into bu into the masters program knowing you wanted to do a thesis or was it something that came up as you got into the program more so i knew that i wanted to do a thesis my idea to do a thesis was okay let me do a thesis and if i really like it i'll just uh, continue with doing the psc program and so far the i really like how the thesis has been i like i like you know having a problem following a web of papers figuring something out also not figuring something out since i kind of like all that now i uh, now i'm in the psc program but i did start with the idea of uh, doing a thesis Okay. Any other questions? Okay. See you guys. Thanks. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna talk about work-life balance here. And first question is about friends. How do you meet people in graduate school? For me, it's. Uh, mostly uh classmates roommates uh and i joined gys and uh mentorship uh and people in lab and um what are good ways to meet friends outside of the bu um uh, i'm not sure about that cuz so uh, it's kind of hard but my sister lives in los angeles and uh she's a student uh in uh, ucla and ba program so i just joined her party and made lots of interesting friends and um for chinese i actually met lots of bu and neu friends uh on xiao hongshu which is kind of ig and um yeah uh and um there are lots of like uh interesting uh online uh activities now like uh, make dumplings or international student social nights uh hold by like gwise or sage uh you can like find their website um bu and um just sign up for it and you can get lots of emails about those activities which is really interesting and like painting activity yeah and uh about boston what is your favorite thing to do and uh in boston um i would say <laughs> maybe uh shop around newbury street uh which is a really good place and um 
the favorite place to eat around Boston, I would say Howard Street. And uh, it's like lots of uh, Asian food here. Uh, and I currently live in Austin, like lots of good food around here. And uh, we got like Hong Kong uh, supermarket and Star and Whole Foods around. And if you have a car, you can drive to Costco. It's not that far away. And mostly I cook for myself. So lots of good, good place to eat uh, around like uh, Boston, uh, BU. And fitness, how do you maintain a healthy uh, diet and exercise routine? Uh, we got like um, uh, Agen, Agony's uh, arena, uh, you know, the fitness center, we got like, you can swim and we got really good gym there and uh, basketball place, yoga, uh, yoga, dance class. Uh, basically you can do everything around here. And uh, Boston is a really good place to run uh, around the city. Yeah, lots of people run along the Charles River, uh, really good view. And um, uh about living uh i live in yeah austin now and uh how did you find an affordable apartment and choose your roommates uh for me i like uh used wechat to find apartment and my roommates and uh it's actually really hard to find a perfect roommate you know uh but after that you can find like uh, after you live in Boston for a while, if you want to switch your apartment, you can uh, live with your friends and um, uh, find like apartment on Facebook. And uh, uh, I think the space is the most uh, important thing about apartment uh, or a house because I, I live in a house now and uh, we live like really individually and separately, which is really good for us, especially we uh, work from home now. And um, uh, about professional relationships and development. So when should I begin to think about uh, professional development opportunities to prepare myself for a career after graduate school? I would say right now, actually, I would say uh, start as early as you can. Um, uh, you could like look for uh, jobs description on LinkedIn or Handshake and see what do you want to do and uh, what, uh, what those uh, skills in uh, job description, what do they want you, like uh, your qualification and uh, you have to prepare yourself for those uh, job description and you have to match your uh, background as tightly as you can uh, to those company or uh, position. Yeah, and um, so just describe different type of events. Uh, so we actually uh, have like Handshake there. It's really good website. Like you can have appointment with uh, those CDC people. Uh, they can prepare you, you for your uh, interview. And uh, we got lots of events like that, like teach you how to uh, network and uh, uh, answer those questions during interview behavior questions. And, uh, but mostly you're gonna prepare your technique questions uh, by yourself. Uh, and we got like career fair, you can talk to those recruiters, uh, and uh, alumni networking, you can talk to your uh, alumni. Uh, and uh, yeah, and you can use a big interview to get ready for your interview. And do graduate students do internships? Um, for me, uh, it's like uh, I'm an international student. I have to stay in America for two uh, semesters as full time students, and kind of, then I can find an internship here. So the best uh, situation is you join a uh, master program as a, a in fall and after two semester it's like summer vacation then you can uh, find an internship to do that and internship those kind of experiences really really important for your uh, job searching and um, and uh, also you can do like a thesis in a professor's lab which is really good for your uh, as experiment on your resume too. And um, 
Yes. Uh, how do I go about finding an internship position? Uh, I would say like a Handshake, Monster, Glassdoor, LinkedIn, and uh, mostly important things like do like networking uh, as much as you can. Like I got the real connection on LinkedIn before. Now I have like around 200. You, you, uh, it's better if you talk to those alumni and uh, connect with them. And it is uh, gonna be much easier if you have to have an interview, if you have like referral, those kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, that's all, thanks. Uh, is there any questions? Does VU um, just talking, just like, expanding on the housing options, does VU offer uh, graduate apartments or something like that? Um, I'm not sure about that, but I, I know VU offer uh, apartment for undergrad students, but I'm, I'm not sure about graduate students yet. Hi, this is Elizabeth Flagg, and um, I just jumped in because the systems engineering session ended and I got to come in and say hi. I'm the graduate programs manager for materials as well as systems. And the answer to that question is that there is um, housing for graduate students, but during the pandemic, they pretty much have eliminated it and have been using it for um, when they have to, quarantine is not the proper word. If, if you get a positive test result for COVID, they're isolating you and putting, and they're using the graduate housing for that purpose. and. Um, basically keeping students separated. I don't know what's going to happen for the fall, but if you go to um, the BU housing site, they do have um, links to local real estate agents and um, places that are available. And once you move on to the next question, I'll jump online and, and find that URL and pop it into the chat for you. Thank you very much. I, it's good to know that there's a housing site, but generally with the, um, with the, I guess unsure, uh, uncertainty whether these um, housing options will be available. The general um, advice would just be to be looking for apartments independent of like BU options. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I've heard from students different methods that they use. Um, some have used Craigslist. We also, well, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I think that might be a hip thing to do. Um, my daughter is an undergrad in College of Engineering and she used a local real estate agent to find a place in Brookline. Um, that was interesting. Um, and there's also a materials and systems community Slack that admitted students are invited to join. And sometimes students post that they um, have a room available. Um, so there, there are ways to connect with engineering students um, for that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Yeah, Brookline is a really good place to live actually. I think that Alston Brighton might have a reputation for being a little rowdy, <laughs> more student and Brookline might be a little more quiet. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the pricing differences are. I don't know if um, any of our current students can <laughs> say anything about that. Yeah, it's about the same actually. Uh, it's around like 1,000 to 1,500, uh, yeah. Per person. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but Brookline got like uh, Japanese uh, supermarket there and uh, Trader Joe's, Whole Foods. Uh, Austin is more like uh, Star and um, uh, Hong Kong supermarket. And yeah, and Austin is like uh, more close to the BU. Uh, yeah, which is really easy for you to like just walk to school. Um, just as a side note, I'm going to change my picture to be our WeChat um, QR code. So if you're on WeChat, you can follow it. Oh, nice. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, just in general for current students, 
how do you guys commute to campus? Like, do you typically walk or take the train or do you guys have cars? Um, what's the best way to go about that? Um, we have like charlie cars if you want to use the bus or the train uh, and uh, it's like pretty easy for me to walk to school is like 20 minutes around yeah and it's like um, uh, easier for you to live in Boston if you don't have a car like the train and the bus probably like cover most of it Just piggybacking on that is if you do have a car is parking a nightmare <laughs> uh yeah a little bit i have to say yeah i um pre-pandemic i took the commuter rail into boston because i live 40 miles west and i took advantage of the blue bikes membership discount um this is these are the bikes that they have around the city um, and you can just go up and wave your fob at it and then take off and and ride all over I did my riding back and forth on the Charles River, which was great I didn't really have to deal with a lot of road traffic. Um, but that's one of the benefits that you'll find in the link that I just popped into the chat about student. Um, I should have said not student community options but commuter options. So I just put that link in for you. Yeah, and I, I think the bike is like 50 bucks per year for a BU student, right? It might have gone up. I'm seeing 60 on the website. Mm -hmm. Kind of switching gears, um, you mentioned uh, about the internship uh, programs that you mentioned. Um, you mentioned um, students taking on uh, summer internships. Uh, is that, do, can I take that to mean that we can fulfill some of the degree requirements for the Master of Engineering through a summer internship as opposed to during the normal fall and, uh, fall and spring semesters? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think you could do like internship during summer vacation, but it depends like if you do thesis for your professor. I uh, wasn't going to do thesis because uh, I was not going to do like PhD student stuff. Uh, and I'm currently looking for a job now and I'm going to graduate in May. So but uh, I started late to find a job actually. So I was like kind of regret that I didn't do internship. Uh, and I joined like a spring semester. So like I basically, I can't find a job uh, uh, during like that summer vacation for me, but I'm not sure for like American students cause we got like strict rules for uh, international students cause of like visa and all stuff. And, um, yeah, I think it's better if you do an internship and you got to uh, prepare early to find an internship. Yeah. Just to expand on that a little bit more, um, for international students, it has to be a program requirement for them to get an internship. And they have to be studying full time in the United States for two semesters before they're allowed to do an internship, which is why the summer tends to be the time when they would do it. And they actually have to sign up for the with engineering practice option to take advantage of that opportunity. Domestic students or students with a permanent resident card um, or designation don't need to follow that. Um, you can do an internship in the summer, but it would not typically fulfill a program requirement. It's just set up that way for international students to meet visa rules and regulations so that they can maintain their visa status. So you could find an internship through the university, through the engineering or the big BU career development office handshake, which um, had been mentioned, but you wouldn't necessarily register for any credits for it. Gotcha. Okay. So the, so the internship option that, um, so the internship option, I guess, um, engineering with practice, I think it's called, mm -hmm. that's kind of independent of the curriculum. It's an add-on, right? Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, so it looks like 
it's almost time for um, the next session to start for um, the College of Engineering. Um, so uh, if you go back to the engineering link that you had before, and I'll see if I can find it, um, you can participate in the three o'clock live guided virtual tours of the campus. And then at 3.30, they're going to have two sessions. One is a graduate student panel, um, which might be similar to what you've just enjoyed with our current material students. As And then there's a separate track for um, career search. And then at four o'clock, there's a financing your education um, piece. Let me just, oh, and it looks like Gabby put the Zoom links in for you. Thanks, Gabby. No problem. All right. It was nice to jump in on, on the tail end and get to see some of you. And thank you so much to Gabby and to our student panelists. It was really great to have you participate today. Um, definitely reach out if you have any questions. I can connect you with the student panelists if you, if you have more questions that you'd rather direct to them. Or you can email me, um, eflag at bu.edu, and I can help you out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.